Welcome back to another delightful Wednesday program. Lots of good things lined up today. I was planning on doing a different game for the end of the show, but we're going to jump back into some Jackbox, which reminds me I forgot my iPad. So I will have to run upstairs and grab that before we play because my phone sucks. Nightmare's here. Hello. Beard is here. Hello. Anna is here. Hello. Uh, Hello. Are those special emojis I put in there? Interesting. All right. Big show lined up today. Um, we got uh, Ugly Truths. And again, these are all things that if you're here watching this live, you can certainly uh, get involved in the conversation over on the chat. If you have anything that you want to bring up or anything that you think would be fun to bring up um, uh, or, uh, you know, you want to get involved in the conversation. You can certainly do that over in the YouTube chat. Uh, ugly truths. What are some things that people either just don't know or they refuse to believe? We're going to get into that. We also have what if historical events had clickbait titles. And for the most part, you'll be able to tell exactly what the event is. But there's a few of them. I want to see if Lan and, and Frank are able to, to actually figure out what the event is that it's talking about. And I think that's how we're going to score because no Gen Z. Bob Cousy, no Gen Z game tonight, actually. And then we're going to get to a baseball movie draft. We have the 2024 baseball season. Tip. What would you say Tip. there? It's not the tipping what? off. It's not kicking off. The start. Pitching off. Pitching off. Batting yeah, off. Play ball. Play Whacking ball off. off. <laughs> Baseball season. Grabbing the balls. Baseball season 2024 is whacking up tomorrow. So anyway, we're going to get to baseball movie draft, and then we're going to have uh, some Jackbox as well. So if you're new to the stream, uh, what you make, make sure what you do. First of all, make sure you subscribe to the channel down below if you haven't already. Make sure you're clicking Thanks. like down below. That definitely helps the channel. And then... Um, if you want to get involved in Jackbox games, all you need to do is if you're watching from a computer or a tablet, if you have a second device like your phone, you can play along with us when we play these Jackbox games. Also, don't forget, we do have the member tiers. We have the upper tier, which is the member Lorian. That's $4.99 a month. And then we also have the uh, 99 cent um, tier, which is a channel supporter. And both of these tiers, I think I forgot, Anna, I actually need to send you... Um, uh, Beard took a gummy. Apparently, I ate a gummy. Um, I need to. I need to send you the um, the phone wallpaper actually that you get when you become a member because that's one of the perks of being a member of the channel is that I created it's this one. Um, let me actually see if I can find it here really quick. Uh, I created a wallpaper, and now I'm really gonna have to deep dive to find this stupid thing because I don't remember when I did it. Two Three ago. weeks ago. Hmm. No, further than that. Oh, here we go. Last night. Oops. Why did that go over there? There we go. So essentially, here is what the uh um Here's the wallpaper. This is this is the glorious wallpaper that you guys get. Shim is still on there. Shim is uh planning on being back hopefully soon. Um, you know, he was here in the States doing some touring, he's doing some, doing some concerts, and then he had to go back home and move and, and tackle a bunch of other things. But, um, so hopefully Shim will be back soon. I was going to try to get, uh, wallpaper should be the beard and the bikini. Everybody would pay for that. Look, if you guys want, I will do a picture of the beard and the bikini. Um, if that's what you guys want for a wallpaper, because we do have that. At least I know I have a version of the picture here. Um... Let's see here. We could turn this into a wallpaper. Jesus. <laughs> Shim just barely got home last night. God, that's a that's such a long ass flight, man. Wow. Yeah, I totally forgot. Uh, sitting there with beard. <laughs> 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 there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. But uh, again, make sure you guys are clicking like down below and. Um, you're subscribed to the channel. I apologize if you guys hear coughing in the background. That's my poor dog. I took him to the vet on Monday. He's 14 years old, and essentially he has a collapsed trachea, and so he coughs a lot. And the poor guy, I'm pretty sure that was another one. There it is. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, um, but he just sits outside my door because while I'm working all day, he just likes to sit and hang out on the, the dog bed that's right behind me here. And he just sleeps there, usually peacefully. But right now he's coughing up a goddamn storm. But um, Frank yeah. thought it was a bird. I thought it was a squeaky toy. I don't know. 
He, I mean, it's unfortunately he does sound, uh, he does sound like a squeaky toy. Um, all right. So what are we going to do here? Let's, uh, let's go ahead and kick this thing off. Shall we? Kick it, Sally. I got some new music too. What are some ugly truths that either people refuse to believe or they just don't know? Here is the actual headline that I found over on Reddit. What's an ugly truth many won't accept or don't know? So again, if you have any of these and you're over in the YouTube chat, you're more than welcome to bring them up over there. We'll bring them up on the show. Um, I think I, I thought I, I think I asked you guys before. Did you guys have any that you wanted to, Not a few, to bring up? But they're more they're mostly general. They're what? I said I have a few, but they're like general. It's not like crazy ones that I'm sure we'll see from this Reddit post. Well, no, I feel yeah, I got the, a couple. For the for the most part, um, they're not really all that crazy. But go ahead, Lane, give me one of yours. Uh, looks do matter. Looks do matter. Come down here, you'd be shocked. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. I mean, haven't they done studies that have shown that the more attractive somebody is, the more people were, will go out of their way to do something for them? I actually saw or heard a report that it's women will choose less appealing guys, guys that don't look as physically attractive as life partners. And the reason why is because biologically in their head, they will see it as this guy will not cheat on me. So you'll see a lot of like gorgeous women with just fat dumps of clay. And you always wonder why they're married. And it's because they feel that the guy will not go out and cheat on them. That's why they are married to him. So we, I guess we'd have to ask the women in the chat if that's true or not. Yeah. Is that true? Women in the chat, let me know. Uh, I will ask my wife this later because uh, she's out of my league. <laughs> the only one I had is that some people don't want to be told that they're bad drivers and they won't admit to it, even though they're the shittiest drivers in the world. <laughs> Is that one of your hard I know truths? A few people like that. Or ugly yeah. truths? All right, what else? What else you guys got for ugly truths? What's another one you got, Frank? Um, people being annoying. They what about just it? don't know it or don't want to accept the fact that they are? You know, that's actually that is very similar to one that we're going to get to from okay. from here on Reddit that we'll we'll get to in a, here in a bit. Let me uh let me go ahead and start going through these. So if any of these are kind of related to one of the ones that you guys were going to bring up, make sure you chime in and let me know. But the first one that we have up on the board, you can do everything right and still fail. I unfortunately think that there's far too many people that don't understand this fact. They think that if yeah, they do everything, life. yeah, if they do everything right and they do everything as they should, then everything will be fine and that will be it. And there was a response to this. I think it's this one. Yeah, it says here, I'm an RN who was training some medics. For some reason, they were taught that if they did everything right, the patient would live. I had to tell them they could do everything right and the patient would die. They can do everything wrong and the patient will live. Is there Dr. Dr. Nick? Hi, everybody. <laughs> hey. Put I mean, the blue thing connected I mean, it, to it, my it, wristwatch. In, in all reality, I, I, I see... I think that's one of those things that people don't quite understand is that there's a lot of chaos out there and there's a lot of things that as much as we know, there's a still a lot that we don't understand. And so when it comes to any sort of major procedure or it comes to any sort of um, medical, anything really, you can know every single thing and yet things can still go wrong mm -hmm. or vice versa. Anna says, oof, that one is dark. They're all dark. Well, oh, remember, these are ugly truths on here. So the next one we have here, and this is kind of in relation to uh, Frank that you just said this one about um, being annoying. Yeah, kind of being annoying. annoying. Yeah. Sometimes you're the problem. God damn, there's so many people I know that don't live by this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Everybody else around me is the fucking problem. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. It's like, yeah, all these people around me, I don't know what but that's the deal is. And that's something that blows my mind is I've worked by general twi uh, tit sweat, by the way, is the person who posted this. Um, <laughs> general tit sweat. General tit sweat. Um, the other guy's name is LOL. I am so broke. Yeah. And he, look, look at the, the, the uh, avatar that they have. Um, Teddy bear? But again, this is one of those situations where... 
there are I, I've worked with countless people who truly would do nothing but complain about everybody else and everybody else is the problem and at some point you're just like at what point do they do, do they start to realize oh shit it's me and unfortunately I just don't we think had, they do we had somebody like that at work they thought everybody was a problem this is like one of my first jobs blaming everybody and going around next thing you know they got fired so <laughs> Took care of itself. Yeah, I was gonna say at least they took care of it. Somebody, uh, so LOL, I'm so broke says, extremely hard to recognize when you are, when you are one. It's like your ego takes a hit too when it finally hits you, and then General Titsweat <laughs> responds back with, absolutely. It took me many years to recognize my own toxicity, and it's not an easy thing to come to terms with. But life just gets so much more free when you do. And that's the reality is that I, I think, I think people are scared to admit that it's them. Because once you admit you're part of the problem, you're afraid of becoming the entire problem and that you can't get out of that. Well, some people are just completely, I guess, idiots. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah don't, trust me. There, yeah, there are certainly those people out there that will always refuse to believe it because they think they're that, j just that much better than everybody else for some ungodly reason. Yeah. All right. This next guy. one that we have here. You're not that important. Be kind and have fun instead. Cheap Frills posted that. Sexy Time Wizard said, I want this on a shirt. That was that was kind of the, the other one that I was going to mention, too. Yeah? That in the grand grand scheme of the universe, you don't matter. Yeah, you, do, you know what? I could say something controversial. Ooh! Hold on. Let me turn the music off. Go ahead. Bring it. Well, the whole Black Lives Matter thing started. Like, my perspective of things is, is kind of universal, and it's... It's almost like humanity in some respect was a giant mistake, but also like we had the smallest chance of actually becoming what we were. And so when that whole thing started about Black Lives Matter, my response, somebody asked me like, well, what do you think about it? My response was not, no lives really matter. Everyone's going to die at some point. <laughs> I mean, that's just part of the universe. <laughs> now, that's you know, pretty if some dark. lives mattered, we wouldn't have people dying out here. They would be living forever. So, I mean, I, I just, I don't, I didn't care about it either way because it, to me it's just it was just a way to make money see it went dark uh, uh, well i mean we're talking about ugly truths so this is going to get get a little bit dark but uh um in the grand scheme no of lives things, matter it, i mean it, truly in the grand scheme of things you're not even a blip on the radar of anything in the universe like at all well, even if you think of how long the universe has been around like if you put it on like a ruler length ours would like like human like it would barely be at the beginning of that ruler it would be i mean and there's so much more out there that has been around longer and we're trying to make it seem like well we're we're the annoying people that are not paying attention to being the idiots <laughs> <laughs> humans we are douchebags uh beard just put in the chat not all kids are cute that's true yep there's some of my family that aren't cute <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> it's like a seinfeld episode look at the baby and then it's that, like, that oh. little uggo <laughs> next one here uh kind of again same theme here this one says life isn't fair once you accept that things once you accept that things get easier to understand to which yeah man flaming kind of... ice cream responds another another way to phrase this would be not every bad thing happens for a reason sometimes people just get cancer sometimes people are abused sometimes life, people man. just die none of it is part of a grand meaningful narrative that works everything out for the best in the end in this world things just happen sometimes and we have to learn to live in this world and that's one of the problems that we run into is and again i believe they've done studies on this that our brains try to connect dots that aren't necessarily there. That's why you get conspiracy theories oh, like you yeah, do. Yeah, you find you find that on YouTube and the internet every day. <laughs> yeah. And and so and, but it's it's I mean there's there's a reason for that. It's because chaos is so confusing to our brains. We try to make sense of things by making it so that, well, this relates to this and relates to this and relates to this. Now, if somebody wants to see, look at something that was bad in their life, something that happened, they went through a divorce or somebody passed away or something like that, and they want to use that as motivation and, well, this happened for a reason, or let's say you get fired. This happened for a reason and you use that to motivate yourself to do better. That's fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I have always been a major advocate of 
things don't just happen for a reason. Things just happen, and it's how you react to them that creates your reality. And that's it. Because there, and again, this is where it, get, it completely depends on on your belief system. Because if you are truly somebody who believes in a higher power, you're gonna think that yes, this person, this you know, whichever god that you pray to put this thing in your way or change this aspect of your life. And that, and they did that for a reason where my side, the way that I look at the, you know, essentially everything is that it's all chaos and we just, we aren't sure what's going to happen. And the only thing that we can do is react in our best interest and um, react the best that we can. That guy's name reminded me that the flaming lips are coming to town here to do a concert. <laughs> <laughs> here's here's a uh, fabulous calls. I answer uh, says luck factors into your success more than we want to admit yeah. luck of birth. I mean, think about that right there. Think about like, there's one in here. I can't remember if it was in this, in this question or another one that I was looking at earlier in the week, but it was about, um, and it might be one that we get to later. And it was it may have been a hard truth or something, but it was like miscarriages are far more common than men believe or men really understand. Like that's I'll cut in on this a little bit though. Luck, sure. I it has a factor, but brown nosing and butt kissing your supervisor. I've had that happen where I work a lot, where people were on the cusp of getting fired, but they were great at brown nosing and but kissing supervisors that they would get promotions and pushed up to positions they're not supposed to be in over talented people because the talented people showed up to actually do work instead of, you yeah. know, be a brown. So as much as it is luck, sometimes just be social and blow some freaking hot air up a supervisor's ass. And that can get you promoted quicker than anything else. Sadly enough, I agree 100% with that. There have been so many people that I've known that just were good at kissing ass. They weren't good at their yeah. job. They were just yeah, good at being buddy-buddy with people, and they built a career off of it. I got to I mean, th when this goes back about 15 years ago, but when I was working retail and I was uh, the assistant manager of the store, our, our manager quit, and they brought in this guy who had worked with us before. And I swear to God, the guy would fall asleep standing up in the store. Like he would just fall asleep standing up. And they made him manager because when he was a kid, he was at a summer camp to where the, the owners of the store now owned. They were the counselors. And he basically was buddy buddy with them. And they put him in charge of the store. And all of us were like, good Lord. And the guy got fired because he was stealing money and giving out discounts. Yeah, there you done. go. And it's just, I mean, it's just stuff like that. If you have connections or if you know how to blow smoke up people's asses, you will move ahead quicker than anything, any amount of luck or hard work will do for you. See that? And that's not, that's something I could never, ever do. Like I just, I, ugh, it, it makes me feel icky I, thinking, yeah, thinking I, just, if I don't want to be if i'm moving if I forward connection. yeah if, but well yeah i mean it's one thing to make connections it's another thing to truly advance based yeah. on you kissing somebody's ass yeah that weirds me out man i'm not yeah that just is ugh. that so, puts you on a level of fake and i can't do that yeah the rest of the answer here there are so many talented amazing capable people out there in every field who are completely ignored because they haven't been lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time hard luck doesn't necessarily overcome that or hard work doesn't necessarily overcome that I don't 100% agree with that. I, I I am a firm believer that if you do truly this put your nose, be Irish. Put, put your nose to the grindstone and you really do put in the work, it just might take longer than you expect. And I think that's yeah. where things go haywire for some people is they expect instant gratification. They expect I'm going to put in the work and within a month I'm going to be here. It doesn't work that that's way. That's also that's also one thing I learned too is I I would tend to in my in my younger life stay at jobs for a long period of time because in my in my head I would think that loyalty of being there would get you promoted quicker and get you higher pay, and then I would I would have people that would come they'd work like, you know, a month or two and they'd leave the job and go somewhere else and you'd meet them like a month uh, you know six months or a year down the road and they're now making double what you are because they are jumping from job to job. And I was never one of those that could do that. But I would say to people, if you, if you're at a job where you don't think it's going anywhere, don't feel loyal to them, find something and just job hunt until you can, I mean, that'll get you higher paid and higher promoted quicker than staying somewhere for years and years with just them basically taking advantage to glad that you're there being the Hank Hill of propane and being the assistant manager. Propane, propane accessories, boy. Yeah. Good Lord. 
Damn it, Bobby. Damn it, Bobby. That boy ain't right. And speaking of your Flaming Lips, Lips concert, this is the last yeah. one for this topic of what are some ugly truths. A music concert which plays at greater than 110 de- uh, decibels is permanently injuring their fans. Mm-hmm. Somebody else chimes in here. It's actually just over 85 decibels is permanently injuring their fans because 85 is all you need for hearing damage. And this comes from a sound engineer. Beard, you can always chime in did on that, that to one. Me. Aerosmith, Aerosmith did it to you? Yeah, dude, I left that concert and I couldn't hear for three days after that. And there's like tones that I, I can't hear now because we were... We were almost with the speakers there, and they were blowing that shit out. Man. What? What? Yeah. What? Thank you, Aerosmith. All right, Lane, you got you got any else, man? You've been kind of quiet here. Uh, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. By the way, it is Alan's birthday coming up here in a couple of days. He's turning 25 hey. years old. And uh, by the <laughs> way, um, just as a heads up, I think we're going to stream this weekend since uh, Alan's got the weekend off. I think that we're actually going to be able to do kind of a full Jackbox live stream this weekend because, you know, we're going to get through these few topics here and then we're going to play some Jackbox, but it's still pretty limited. We aren't able to play as much as I would like to. So coming up this Saturday, I think that it's actually like we're going to be able to play kind of a full three to four hour streaming session and just play the shit out of some Jackbox. Get yourself some drinks. Have some fun. Dark humor. It's going to be great for what time are we doing that? everybody. Um, it'll. I'm, I'm going to shoot for around 6 p.m. Pacific time. So it'll probably be around the, the, the same time. Or so it'll be 9 p.m. your time there, Frank. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say um, during think, the day, I, sure, I, I wouldn't be able to. No, nah, it, it should be at night. So make sure that you guys are checking out um, uh, like Instagram, my Instagram or my Facebook. It's at The Real Brand DeLorean. Because I'll be posting on there about when we'll actually be going live and doing this stuff all right um and it's and you know maybe we'll throw in some gartic phone or something like that i wanted to play gartic phone tonight it's just i know i know jackbox works and we're gonna stick with that and i was way behind on on everything all right next topic if historical events had a clickbait title or had clickbait titles what would some of them be Again, if you're able to come up with any here that are in, uh, um, that you can come up with over on the YouTube chat, feel free to fire away. We'll read them here live. There's one really, really dark one that I'm not going to bring up. I might post later. Well, now you have to bring it with, up. No, I don't have to do anything, goddammit. Well, why'd you mention it? Because I'm going to promote and be like, hey, make, go, make sure you're following me on Instagram. Yeah, it's, it's that's my clickbait. <laughs> I mean, it was, it's really fucking dark. Uh, anyway, here's the first one. His driver made a wrong turn. You won't believe what happened next. Can you guys think of what this was? For some reason, OJ popped in my head, but I don't know. No, I don't think this one was OJ. Lane, you got a guess on this one? JFK? See, I was <laughs> thinking, I mean, it could be that one. Uh, when I first read this he one. He was on a set route. Yeah, yeah, I guess. A, well... I mean, you could consider it a wrong turn because, you know. Um, my first thought when I read this one was Princess Diana. And, it, and they're talking Ooh. about her driver. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, this is apparently Franz Ferdinand. Franz Ferdinand. Well. Like the actual Franz Ferdinand, the person, yeah, the not, got not the band. assassinated for... Started World War One. Yeah, started World War uh-huh. One. Which, as you can see, their impressive emu wrote, "Take me out." <laughs> and then, of course, people jumped right into the uh, to the lyrics. All right, historical events. If they had uh, clickbait headlines, curing infections using mold spores. Doctors hate this one weird trick. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, what penicillin. Yeah. yeah. So somebody he says here that it still amazes me that the discovery of penicillin was done this way. You feel sick? Rub some moldy ass bread on it and get back out there. Need some of that blue cheese, man. Blue cheese. Did dressing. you guys? <laughs> did you guys? Oh, by Stigalicious, by the way, is the one. Is the person who wrote the, the middle comment. Um, did you guys ever? Um, what, you watch Sliders, right? Remember Sliders? Yeah, that was a no. fun show. You never watched Sliders, Lan? I figured that would have been right up your alley. Mm-hmm. Kind of like Quantum like Leap. Like late 90s. Yeah, it had, uh, what's his face? The guy yeah, that was no, married I know, to... I know the show, I just never watched it. Oh, okay. So, so but you you know the premise, right? Like they, they're sliding between different realities? Yeah. Yeah, like so, multiverse. So there's there's one 
where they're in a reality where penicillin hadn't been created. Mm. And so all these people were dying of these really simple diseases that you're able to take care of with penicillin. So they end up going to a dumpster and finding mold and essentially <laughs> discovering penicillin for this for this alternate reality. Yay, Jerry O'Connor. Completely, completely changing their their universe. Wow. Pretty much. And then it was basically like Quantum Leap, except with Back to the Future mixed in. Yeah, yeah it was. was. It was. I, there's two scenes specifically from that show that I remember. There was that scene, and there's another one where there's... It was like a true mathlete um, competition, and it's Jerry O'Connell, and there's, a, like, there's like a dodgeball involved, and he's going through all of the numbers of pi, and the further he goes, the more points he gets for his team or something like that. Like the, the I truly... remember the dinosaur one, like that's in the crappy. I, see, I don't CGI remember that dinosaurs. one at all. It was like the very first one. It was like trying to draw people in from the Jurassic Park craze, and they did like a they go and like the dinosaurs never you know went extinct, and it was just crappy CGI dinosaurs. Yeah, but as those a kid, the I best. loved it. <laughs> there was what was there was a show I think it was on NBC. La Brea. Completely sidetrack here. I don't think that was it. Sequest? No, it's where it's where they they I think they go back in time for the dinosaurs. It was Labrea. Lost? Uh, La Brea? It was most recent. Yeah, it was the one where like they the earthquake and they fall in the earth and no, it's like no, 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 no. This was old. The one I'm thinking of is older. Um, the, the one Street. I'm thinking of was like at least. Uh. No, see, it's not that. I'll have to look this up later, because it wasn't La Brea. It was something else, and it was it was touted as this like huge, massive TV show that was gonna break all these records. And then I think it was they right around. Canceled? Well, I think yeah, I think it was like a, around a writer's strike or something like that that mm. it, that ended up uh, essentially uh, was it surviving. No, that's not it. Anyway, uh, next one here: historical clickbait headlines. How did this little boy manage to destroy an entire city? Here's one that I'll, this I'll, this is how we'll give you guys. Uh, it wasn't Land of the Lost either, Nightmare. Um, can you guys think of what historical event it's talking about? First person to come up with the answer, you get a point. And that's how we'll decide what we're going to do for the this little boy managed to destroy an entire city. I mean, that could be taken in a few ways, though. All right. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to give you I guys don't know. Napoleon conquering something. Well, the guy is a major that Billy Joel good. fan, so it has to do something with one of Billy Joel's songs, right? Uptown girl. We didn't start the fire. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, so man. let me. Next one here. Scenes from an Italian restaurant. Also, watch this fat man fall down and explode. Oh, little boy and fat uh, man. The the atomic bomb. Hey oh, oh, Point for land. And I think actually there's another one on here too for this. America sends a fat man and a little boy to negotiate with Japan. <laughs> they didn't really <laughs> negotiate. <laughs> I'm not laughing about the suffering. That's just a <laughs> weird ass fucking topic for that. Yeah, yeah a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> there All was right. no negotiation. It was your fucking dead. <laughs> no, yeah, this was another one. Japan has never, the, Japan was never the same after this special delivery. And then oh. somebody put buy one, get one free. I mean, that would be like the bumper sticker that shows up like in the middle when you're reading the article, right? Like and, the screen yeah. thing pops up. And again, this one not near as dark as the one that I'm not reading on the live stream tonight. So just yeah. uh, just know that. Staying classy, Tallahassee. All right, here's another historical clickbait headline. Boston, Boston, party. Boston yeah. protester. Land Le gets another point. Woo! <laughs> now we're just giving points, okay? <laughs> Boston, Boston protesters spill the tea. Uh, should King George be worried about a breakup? <laughs> Nightmare says, dang, those comments are brutal. I'm telling you, man, the one that I'm not, the one that I'm not reading is really fucked up. Next one here. You won't believe how many soldiers can fit in this wooden horse. Jesus. <laughs> Troy. Point for Frank. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Why was Ben Franklin flying a kite? The answer will shock you. 
You know that that kind of time like goes with that Oreo commercial where they're like the guy rolls up with the the horse and he's like, yeah, I got a present for Athena, and the guards are like Athena, and oh, let's twist on it, and they pull the Oreo apart, and he had the cream side. Oh yeah, bring it in. See the only the only one that I remember of a commercial with the Trojan horse is the new the pretzel one. It's like the most. It's the Oreo one now. It's it's just like the, the it's like a game where you it's like you ask a question and you twist. And if the, oh, like and the left whoever side, has the cream, yeah, whatever. It's like the left side has the cream. It's a no. <laughs> if the right side has the cream, it's a yes. It's wrong, I mean, man. If you like the cream in the middle, <laughs> double stuffed, you know, depending on. Okay, how quick, you want read it. this headline. <laughs> I already did. It was the Ben Franklin one, and somebody else wrote the results were electrifying. <laughs> But not as shocking as the one that Brandon's not going to read you. It's not. Yeah, exactly. That's my clickbait. Fudge bait. covered cream. Rome, day one. Finished already? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had to write. That's good. That's really good. It's real. It's really good. And then... Sweater just a, poorly knitted. Yeah, I know. <laughs> just a few more here. We have uh, unsinkable ship sinks. You'll never guess how. Ten ships that hey, weren't as unsink... with Jack? Huh? I was joking. Was that the one with Jack? No. From... No, that was the one where the captain of the ship was King Theoden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ten ships that weren't as unsinkable as they thought. Number nine will shock you. <laughs> <laughs> what I eat in a day. Gandhi diet breakdown. You know what's so funny <laughs> is I think back in 2016, I started like just one day having fun with my Facebook update page and i was like i put out like what would this have been like if facebook was out in the 90s and so like every like 30 minutes i'd post like some stupid question like stupid thing like well i think britney is better looking than than christina but christina sings better but britney knows how to dance you know just stupid stuff about how it would have been in the 90s if social media was out and how we probably would have all <laughs> been destroyed in the 90s i like watching Thank God. i like i like tracking those ones that people do where if it was like seinfeld and how, how yeah. the, the cast of Seinfeld would post on social media. Uh, but this one, so what I eat in a day, Gandhi Diet Breakdown. This person said, somehow it'd still be a 49-minute video in YouTube fashion. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and that's the truth. And final one here for historical clickbait. Hanoid with Vietnam. USA says, forget about it. Wow. <laughs> that's stupid. But it made you laugh, Lan. It made you <laughs> laugh, and that is what is important. All right. If you're checking out the stream here, make sure that you guys are clicking like down below. We got a two-to-one score right now, so Lan gets to pick first in the baseball movie draft. Again, I'm going to mention it to you if you're just tuning in. Coming up this Saturday, which will be March 30th, I think. 30th. We're going to be 30th. doing a full Jackbox live stream. We're going to get to some Jackbox here in about 15 minutes, but they're going to do it. We're going to do like a full three to four hour live stream this Saturday where we're just going to get hammered and we're going to have some fun with Jackbox. Hmm. It's going to be fan damn fantastic but uh that's going to be coming up this saturday also a quick plug make sure that you guys are checking out all the uh shorts and everything that i have on the video channels youtube instagram facebook two shorts drop every single day i also do some two minute content where i explain something in two minutes uh recently i did one on mike tyson i also did one on did you guys see it did you guys see it his dick <laughs> michael keaton Mm -hmm. I did one on Michael Keaton, and that is something I was thinking about doing. But we have baseball season starting uh, tomorrow. So, well, I mean, uh, did you know the baseball season's actually already technically started? Well, they had, like, some overseas games. Yeah, it was uh, yeah. the Dodgers and the Padres played over in Korea, and then the whole story broke about Shohei Otani's interpreter sure, yeah. losing, uh, losing bets. <laughs> No, his interpreter taking $4 million in betting. That's what, that's what he's going basically, with. Yeah, that's basically what it was. Um <laughs> And so, oh shit, let me see here. Oh shit, what? So I thought about if we were, we could, we, uh, one that we could always do would be Michael Keaton movies. We could do a movie draft on Michael yeah, Keaton. Yeah, I thought about that too, because there are some good ones that are out there. Do you know what uh, movie I was watching with the family until my wife fell asleep halfway through this past weekend? Multiplicity. No, but that's a fucking great movie, dude. Mr. Mom? <laughs> Mr. Mom! <laughs> That's a good movie. I like Gung Ho. Gung Ho is yeah, one of my was great. Gung Ho yeah, is fantastic as well. Those those old eighties ones from from Michael Keaton are absolutely fantastic. So if yeah, you haven't seen great. it, so if you want to go see it, so do you guys ever go to Just Watch? No. Uh, JustWatch.com. 
Maybe so essentially, like if, it would be a naughty site. <laughs> no, but apparently my kid's going to bootleg websites on her fucking school computer now to watch movies. And you know what movie she picked? White chicks. <laughs> you can like stream that for free. Yeah. Like that was like, first of all, I'm like fucking why white chicks for the love of God. Apparently she loves that movie. Um, but yeah, they, like some friend told her about some bootleg website, so she went to that. And I told her if I ever catch you going to a bootleg website again, I'm you're I'm Looking taking up away white chicks. Yeah, find a movie that's in the theaters. All yeah, all I'm I'm, I'm removing all electronics from the goddamn house. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't remember what I was going with that. What was I saying there? Oh, beard's gonna be know. beard's gonna be flying all day. Unfortunately, uh, um, about Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. Uh, we were watching Mr. Oh, 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 justwatch.com. So basically what justwatch.com is, it's a website. So if there's a movie or a TV show that you want to see, but you don't want to have to go to every single streaming service to find out where it's streaming, it will tell you. So if you look up, you know, uh, a, a movie, it'll pop up and it'll say like, it's on this streaming service or you need a subscription here, or you can purchase it here, like through Apple or something like that. Now, the problem was it didn't show it Mr. Mom was streaming anywhere. It is streaming on YouTube with commercials. So if you just want, you know, if you don't mind sitting through, a, you know, a minute or two of commercials every, you know, half hour or so, Mr. Mom is available for you. It's a fan damn tastic. IMD, IMDb has that too. Just watch is better. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, how? Where? It show it shows where it's, where you can watch it at. Bullshit. Yeah, it does. Like, bullshit. So if I look up, although this... the unfortunate thing is that it shows Amazon Prime on all of them, but <laughs> for two ninety nine, mm. you can watch the H the standard definition version. Well, that's the thing. So they do a good job on. Um... Oh, there you go. I see where it says streaming. Um... Yeah. Well, see, Just Watch has it patterned out better, where it'll show you specifically where you can find something do you need a subscription service or will you you know do you have to purchase it on amazon or do you have to purchase it through apple or whatever the case may be and i totally forgot about the uh um the 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 relay race that they had when he throws it while they're going through uh, the website it's called justwatch.com just watch <laughs> All right, it is movie draft time. Lynn gets to go first. I will go third. So we're making ourselves a Frank sandwich. Yay! Hey, is that weird? It's a, Did I make it's that a weird? Frank footer. I also, I also, so we're doing baseball movies because the baseball season starts tomorrow. And I do have picks from Spano as well. So we'll get to those when we're all uh, done with this stuff. But Lan, go ahead and start things off here. What is your first baseball movie that you are drafting? Uh, first one, and I think my favorite baseball movie, uh, Major League. Major Absolutely. League, fan damn. Wesley Snipes. Oh my God, that is such a good movie. And I remember, because I was big into baseball as a kid and I would see- No boo, no hit curveball. I would see the um, the previews for it, and I just wanted to watch it, but it you know it was rated R. Yeah, and eventually, R. I eventually talked my dad into letting me watch the movie, and it is arguably one of my favorite. You uh, you want to hear something movies. really like funny and stupid at the same time? Always. Like so we're we're old enough to where you would have to go into either like a, a, there might be a grocery store that had a movie section or a blockbuster or something and the vhs tapes you know they'd have them with the cover art which was it was that cover art that you have on the screen that baseball for some reason scared the crap out of me as a kid <laughs> as if i thought it was a horror movie that i did not i would not look at the logo because i thought there was something demonic going on <laughs> with that and I, I didn't watch it till i was like in like middle school because that that baseball well there was something there was something demonic going on it was uh it was charlie sheen on roids well that too because <laughs> he, he you know he's admitted that right like he was on the yeah. juice during uh, the filming of major league man that guy he had to get into the things. role of a, of a major league baseball yeah. manager he up went your, to, he went to mark uh mcguire and got the juice man up your butt joe boo all right, Frank, what is your first baseball movie? Uh, we'll, we'll just we'll go with probably the one that everybody recognizes. And I'll tell you the truth, though. I don't really know if it's actually a baseball movie. I think it's a movie with baseball in it. 
but Field of Dreams is going to be my first mm -hmm. one because I that's think a, it's more. That's, that, no, I think it's, it's a baseball more, movie. No, that's hundred. Well, no, but movie. I mean, it's it's more. I mean, the movie's basically about him and his dad, yeah. and then it's 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 you know encompassing baseball, but the real story is is him coming to grips with the relationship with him and his dad but in baseball was the thing that brought them together so well, I, th but I, think I, I love that's, it but I, I, it's a fantastic movie and i think that that's one of the things that makes a lot of these baseball movies so good is that it's if you really were to cut down the storyline it's about something else mm -hmm. baseball is the glue that holds the story together um all right so i'm up and uh I get to go back to back here, and I'm telling you right you now. Do. Uh, shit. Oh, I know. I think I know exactly what two you're gonna pick. Uh, uh, I didn't pick one because I got a funny story. If he does pick it, uh, uh, not a funny all right. Story what's one story. that you think I'm gonna pick, Lan? A League of Their Own. Lot. And that was the other one. <laughs> you fuckers. Yeah, th those were the. Well, those... because we used to quote the League of Their Own when we'd play Halo to. Three oh my god hey cowgirls see the grass going, don't eat it don't eat it <laughs> you know, i, I love it like so a, good in there i would tell you, you look like a little penis with a hat on <laughs> so here we got the sandlot which is this is a, a different that's a poster. class and it was i was surprised as a kid to find out that wasn't a disney movie that was a fox movie yeah weird right well now it's a disney movie because they bought fox yeah. but at the time such a good movie though you're killing me smalls how can you're i have some more of something smalls. if i haven't had anything yet it was signed by some some woman named some, Baby some woman, Baby Babe Ruth. Ruth. <laughs> and the thing that always bothered me about that when he takes the and he signs the baseball and like so that's the fake his one. Dad. <laughs> so his dad won't notice. Watch when he curls the H. It, it looks like he adds an E on there. Mm -hmm. So it's R U T H E, and I'm like bullshit. Mm -hmm. That's bugged me for years when it comes to the Sandlot. Babe Ruthie. Baby Babe Ruthie. You hit a ball in my yard. Why don't you just come to the front door and knock? I would have gotten it for you. Ah, James Earl Jones. What was the name of the and dog? Darth Vader was the name. Hercules. Yeah. And then, of course, we also do have uh, A League of Their Own, which arguably my favorite line, not including John Lovitz, is when they're getting ready to go to the World Series. And they're trying to pile up in the bus, and the kid comes and asks Jimmy Dugan. For, <laughs> Alan knows exactly yeah. where I'm going. He comes to ask Jimmy Dugan for an autograph. He signs yeah. it, and then as he walks away, the kid goes, <laughs> "Hold on, <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> avoid the clap, Jimmy Dugan." Great and then he goes, advice. Hey, that's good advice. <laughs> Scooby Steve, movie, what's up, Scooby Steve? We're talking I won't, baseball. I won't lie. That movie, though was the first movie that actually made me like sad and depressed on some level because it, it, you it's the whole you see him old and then it goes back to when they're younger and now it you know it, you have to, of course you to deal with the husbands dying in, in the war and stuff but then you come back to their when they're old and you're seeing all the individuals that die and i just remember i think like 12 or 13 watching that at the end of that going damn this movie's kind of messing me up man i don't want to cry right now like this movie's really messing with my emotions i honestly thought for the longest time that the the older ladies that are at the beginning that kind of bookend that movie mm -hmm. i honestly thought that some of them were the actual baseball players i mm. thought that was the her real voice and i didn't realize until i was like almost mid-20s that it was gina davis dubbing her voice i know, thought and, it was and, gina and davis movie. in makeup i didn't realize yeah. that was a whole new actress <laughs> that's what i thought when i first saw it too. i honestly thought that was gina davis in makeup at the end of they, that they movie did a good job with the older oh. women um matching them up with the, with the youngers but yeah I, I didn't realize that i always thought it was that was her voice and then it wasn't until i was in my mid-20s like jesus that's gina davis dubbed over okay yeah i, I mean i, I uh, truly, this was only like maybe a couple of years ago when I found that out. Yeah, Scuba Steve says, there's no crying in baseball. Are you crying? Are you crying? There's no crying She's in crying, baseball. Sir. I like that one scene where he's like, all right, you got a runner on, on first and third. Let's see if uh, Jimmy gives him the sign to swing away. And a customer is like scratching his butt. <laughs> no, I like when when the guy that ends up running the league tells it. He's like, I especially liked it when you 
Scratch yourself Scratch for your an ending there. An he goes, well, anything worth doing, worth doing right. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. He hacks that tobacco on his foot. He's like, Jesus, Jamie, if we paid you more, would you be a little bit more disgusting? Well, I could I use, could the, use money. the money. <laughs> <laughs> See, the way the work is, the train moves, not the station. That's a scene that breaks my heart every fucking time is the scene with her dad yeah. first of all in the gym when he's like don't take it out on her her mom's not around i raised her as i only knew how which was to raise her as a boy a boy oh yeah. and then they're oh, and real quick too there's that one scene where they're kind of going through like the lady training and they're learning across <laughs> their legs a lady never reveals, reveals and Lori petty starts laughing her ass off that yeah. was real yeah that yeah. wasn't like that wasn't in the script like she broke they down laughing it. because of that line yep see look we just blew scuba steve's mind he says that wasn't gina davis it's not it's not <laughs> gina davis it was another actress she, the, the lady who played that uh the older version she was like european or something right mm. i think so mm. somebody uh somebody in the chat if you can look that up find out who played the older version of Dottie henson in a league of their own all right frank what is your second baseball movie in your draft um I am going to go with uh, uh, another kid's flick. I'm going with Rookie of the Year solely oh, on nice. on the reason because we got the best kind of line out of that. And it's when he's he's getting his cast off and the doctor's telling him to go forward with his arm and he smacks the living crap out of the doctor. And the doctor goes, funky butt loving. Funky butt loving. And the, guy, <laughs> the kid next to him goes, did he just say funky, funky butt, butt loving? loving. <laughs> For a 13 year old right. kid, that was great. I went to school after seeing that, just yelling funky butt loving everywhere because it was the greatest thing I ever heard in my life. I remember when I, I had uh, shoulder surgery when I was in high school and it was, it was essentially like kind of tightening everything up, which they make it sound like that's what this kid has done. And there were so many people in high school that thought that I was going to be able to throw like that kid because i was having this surgery not to mention he had john candy in it too as yep. uh, the announcer oh that's right i can man i completely forgot about that all right lane what is your uh second and third picks you get to go back to back here buddy um so second i'm gonna go the natural yeah good choice robert redford uh robert redford i still don't uh, exactly movie. know what the movie's about because i don't think i've ever been sober watching the whole thing all the way through <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then uh, third, I'm gonna go Mr. Baseball. Yeah, oh, Tom Selleck. Love Hell Baseball. yeah, Mr. love that movie. Mr. Baseball. Baseball. By the way, um, in case you guys are wondering, Frank showed me a Funko Pop of Mr. Sparkle with the, with Homer Simpson <laughs> before we were streaming, and it put me in the goddamn best mood. Um, all right, let me see here. So we have the Natural. This is Land's uh, second overall pick. Again, it's like. I know the movie, but I really don't think I know the full plot line. I know that he bleeds. I just like the baseball stuff in it. That's, well, why, it's, that's why I yeah, watched it's, it. It's like he was a promising up-and-comer. He gets caught up with the woman who ends up shooting him, and he basically disappears she shoots from this it? promising... Yeah, yeah. God, because was she, she was, like, crazy. Like, at the beginning of the movie, like, the woman's crazy, shoots him. And he kind of he disappears. And then he comes back, I think it's, like, 15 years later, uh, and nobody recognizes him. And he's he just he's a natural. He's smacking the ball. And Robert Redford, I mean not Robert Redford, Robert Duvall is a reporter in New York and catches on to who he is. And you know, and it's this whole story basically about oh, redemption. Okay, where, now it's all okay. Now it's all coming back to me. Yeah. Now, so it's, it's, now it's, I'm picking up on it. It's a it's a good movie. It's a long movie. But it's a good movie. Um, and here you here's I, I didn't even think I ever realized what the tagline was here. He's the biggest thing to hit Japan since Godzilla. <laughs> you know, the, the first time I watched this movie was in my Japanese class in high school. There you go. Really? Yeah. It's a great it's a great movie. This I think this one is super underrated because if you like Google baseball movies or best baseball movies, this one's buried like way down the list. Because there's a lot of really good baseball movies, but this one's really buried down there. And it is uh um, hold on. Apparently, my wife forgets that I stream on Wednesdays. She could open the door and say hey again. She's no, she's not home. Um, all right. So there's your uh, your Tom Selleck movie again. Go check that one out. All right, Frank. What's your third and final pick? So I'm gonna let you two decide this. I'm, I got a toss up. Um, as far as which one. Send it to the chat. Like. We'll send it to the chat. Well, be, well, because I, I think the third one you might actually pick 
So, so one of them is Bad News Bears. Are you going to pick that one? I was not. It's in my. Okay. De it's definitely my honorable mentions. I have so, two that I'm t I'm I'm kind of battling. I, I had right a now. toss up between the original Bad News Bears and this movie. It was it was actually on HBO. It wasn't in theaters. It was directed by Billy Crystal. It was called Sixty One. Oh and yeah, it yeah, followed yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. And it followed the the home run uh, With Roger Maris. race between Roger yeah. Maris and. And, and it was more you, you found out like what happened behind the scenes with Mickey Mantle and his alcoholism and Roger Maris actually like the stress and anxiety getting that was such a great movie but it's like I'm tossed up between both because both of them were really were good movies so I, it's like I don't know I, I lean towards either one but I, if I, kinda... I if I were to guide you in one direction I would go Bad News Bears Right, but that's See, just but then I, I, I really loved sixty one just because of what how they they showed like just the mental aspect of both those guys going through what they went. I feel through it was missing eight. There was what? I feel it was missing eight. <laughs> if they added eight more to it, it would have been perfect. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, and also which I'd one? Also... Do, which one do you have the poster for? You got for bad news. Bad we'll news go bad news. news. Because I could, I I looked. Trust me, I, I tried to get the one for sixty one, but they're all like really low res versions oh, of the posters. So. Right. Well, yeah, because it was, it was HBO. I mean, it was just yeah. So, but uh, yeah, we'll go bad news. I I have a couple that um I'm kind of toying around with, but here we're gonna get to some honorable mentions. Do you guys have any honorable mentions? I mean, yeah, Major League Two. You got Mister Three Thousand. Wait, hold on, hold on. Um, slow down here. Uh, Major League Two. I think I got the poster for that. We got that one right there. Which it had uh, Taka. Oh shit, I can't remember his name. This guy here, the one who goes, "You have no marbles, marbles. Oh, yeah. no marbles." <laughs> Bull Durham, of course. Hold, okay, you got to remember, I still have to pick. Well, you said Christers Millions. We should let you pick first, then we'll do our mentions. Um. Well, I want to. I want to go through the honorable mentions first. You guys, let me know, yay or nay, if you guys were were honorable mentions on this one. I'll just. I think I'm just going to go in alphabetical order here. So there was 42, which is yep. obviously the story of Jackie Robinson with um, uh, the Black Panther, Chadwick Boseman, and Harrison Ford. We also have Angels in the Outfield. Yeah, that's a good one, but yeah. Only thing I really remember from that movie that is when cast, he though. leans the foul pole. So that it's a fair ball. Have, have you ever checked the cast on that? It had you had yeah, Adrian, Danny Glover, Tony Danza, and Christopher Lloyd. No, but you also had Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> you had Adrian Brody in there. You had um, a few others that it was like their first like movie job, and they just had small, small roles in it. There's also the Bad News Bears remake. Yeah, was that one was this, wild, man. This one not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Billy Bob Thornton, I thought, did a really good job of portraying Walter Matthau's character. Also, there's all the other bad news bears. Man. The ones that I remember watching when I was a kid, the one I really remember. Go to Japan? No. It was the one where they go to Texas. Oh. Remember? Let go them play! Let them play! You guys don't remember the that? Only thing, the only thing that bothered me about that newer one with Billy Bob, I think he had done Bad Santa before that. And so when I watched it, it just almost looked like an extension of his Bad Santa character for like the first half of that movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it kind of was. Anything. He's just kind of an alcoholic douchebag. But if I mean, he's just doing a more extreme version of what Walter Matthau's character was. I mean, Walter yeah. Matthau's character's drinking beer during practice. Yeah. Uh, Vero kind of says hardball. Vero says hardball with Keanu Reeves. That has not been brought up yet. Uh, next one here is uh, more honorable mentions. There's Bang the Drum Slowly. Older movie. Robert De Niro. Yep. Here is, so, essentially, so Spano brought his three. His picks were Major League. He also brought up Mr. 3000. So if you don't know this one with Bernie Mac, he was a, a former ball player who <laughs> they went back in his stats and they put him at like, it was like 2,998 or something like that. Yeah, like something didn't count. So he comes back and uh, to get his three thousandth hit, and then Spano's third movie, which I guess could kind of count. It's more, it's a softball movie, beer league, with Artie Lang and Ralph Macchio. Uh, I remember that, but I never saw it. And then the beer just brought this one up in the chat. Benchwarmers. Have you guys ever seen that uh, for Love of Game with uh, Kevin Costner? You mean this one right here? Where he's, that's Detroit actually a really, 
that's a really good movie. It's it's slowly paced, but it's really good. Um, let me skip by some of these other ones here. Uh, don't forget we got Moneyball. That's a baseball movie. That's a good one too. Yeah. There's also Would basketball count. No. no, the the scout with Brendan Fraser and Albert. Brooks. I like that one. I like that one. There's the rookie with Dennis Quaid. Yep, that's a Disney movie, isn't it? Yeah, Disney movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's uh, the Pride of the Yankees, which actually had Babe Ruth in it. Yeah, and um, Garrig, I think, wasn't he in it too, or no? I don't think Garrig was in it. No, wait, no, it was about Garrig, right? Yeah, yeah, it was about Lou Garrig. Don't forget, you got the Bingo Long Traveling All Stars and Motor Kings. Starring uh, yeah. uh, Billy D. Williams and um, who else was in this? Oh, Richard Pryor, James Earl Jones. Let's see. I here. actually saw that, but don't quite like remember everything about it. The Babe with John Goodman playing Babe Ruth. That's a good one. You got Little Big League. I got Little Big League right here, and I remember this one yeah. specifically. I loved it because it was the Minnesota Twins, and I'm a Minnesota yeah. Twins fan, and so that was one of those. Uh, that was one of those movies that that hit home for me. I was gonna sell uh, Spano uh, down the river here and say that this was his favorite movie, Fever Pitch, because he's a diehard Yankee fan. <laughs> it actually, wasn't that bad of a movie? I'll be honest. I didn't think it was terrible. I enjoy watching it, but especially so. I'm assuming so. Frank, you've seen it. Have you seen it, Land? Nope. So the whole premise is obviously he's a diehard Boston Red Sox fan, and he has mm-hmm. season tickets, and it's right behind the dugout, and they timed this thing perfectly because it originally the ending was slightly different. Yeah. But it, it led it. into the yeah, they changed the ending because it was the year that the Red Sox came back from down 3 0 to the Yankees and ended up winning the World Series. You know what is so funny about that is I remember when watching when the Red Sox won that. I remember like a camera that went zoomed out and I saw Fallon and Drew Barrymore on the field like hugging or whatever, and I was like what the hell are they doing? Like, just, yeah, what is, what is, no, nobody knew about the, the movie at the time. And you're like, like, what the hell are they? And then they, when the movie came out, I was like, oh, that's what, because they they cut to letting him go on the field and, hey, look, booty. And um, you guys don't know what this is up there for, do you? Scuba that's Steve. Summer just, Catch. Yep. Scuba Steve just put this in the chat. Summer Catch. Mm. You, you know, know the only reason I remember is, right? that movie? Because Freddie Prince Jr., um, I think either went to Florida State or one of the guys were from Florida State and went to that summer league. And that's the only reason why I remember that movie. Jessica Beale. Absolute friggin' smoke show, by the way. And her child's name is Batmo. I know. And she should have done reason, that. That would have been great. Justin Timberlake cheats on that left and right. All right. So here we have. Th- I, oh. This is one that's really highly underrated, I think. And it's fantastic. So it's Tommy Lee Jones as, as Ty Cobb. Yeah, dude, that's a wild movie. And Robert Wool is a reporter who's trying to write mm-hmm. a book on him. And it's just, it, it, this is a great movie. It's a fantastic movie. It's still not my pick. It's an honorable mention. It's right there. Based on, obviously, Ty Cobb. This other honorable mention, Eight Men Out. Yeah, that's wow. a good one. Oh, such a good movie. You got uh, Charlie Sheen. Um, uh, Christopher Cusack. Lloyd, John Cusack. So this is all about the betting scandal that took down the White Sox and they became the Black Sox and they were White banned. Sox. And it led to um, uh, the whole Shoeless Joe Jackson story because Shoeless Joe Jackson was one of the guys that got banned from baseball. However, yep. and what was that? I was going to say, and if he didn't get banned, would probably be probably one of the, the greatest the, baseball players the of all time. Baseball players of all time. Easily. All right, and then the final one, which is my actual final pick. Bull Durham, ladies and gentlemen. Bull, Bull Durham. Durham. Look, I was totally I was throw with the mascot. I would Oh, it's such a good goddamn movie. When <laughs> they're sitting there and they, and they're on the mound and they don't know what to get the one couple that's getting married and then they're dealing you got to get a live chicken for the one guy to get the curse off of his glove. He's like, "We're dealing <laughs> with a lot of shit here." <laughs> All right, well that's going to do it. For our baseball draft, ladies and gentlemen, be looking for those posts on my social medias here coming up later. We're going to get to some Jackbox. I need to go grab my iPad really quick. Let me uh, get the Jackbox starting. The one thing that I want to do is we're going to start with some Drawful, but they have a Drawful animated, which is where you draw a couple of pictures so the picture changes on what you're doing. So let me uh, go ahead and find that here first. Actually, I do have a Be Right Back 
Dude, this match has been going on for like 20 minutes. I'll be right back. That's Swerve Strickland versus Takashi. <clears throat> oh man, they're in overtime, baby. Yeah, I just like in Bull Durham where he's like, look, man, I just want you to hit the mascot. He's like, why? Just do it. He goes up there and he nails the mascot. He's like, man, I don't know. I don't know where he's going to throw next. Jesus. <laughs> Completely psychs the batter out. I think that's where um, Tim Robbins and Susan Sarandon actually met and started dating at that point. And what? They were in that common law marriage. Like they never got married, but it was like a common law marriage. Oh, they never actually got married? No, because Susan Sarandon doesn't believe in marriage, doesn't believe in that whole, because she thinks it, it, it's like making women property and having to take names. So she was one of those that didn't believe in that stuff. And so she was Your basically, really hot too. yeah, she was basically, you know, her and Tim Robbins were in like a common law thing. I think they broke up like four or five years ago or maybe longer, but. Yeah, she uh, she didn't believe in that uh, in the marriage aspect of it. That's a fun movie. You know, it's even I got a funny story about that actually. So back in the late nineties, when the Tampa Bay, when they were still the Devil Rays, um, had just become a club, they were looking for areas to put a minor league team. And one of the guys around here, one of our multimillionaires, ended up getting uh, approval from the Rays to set up a minor league team here in Tallahassee. And it was going to be one of one of their leagues. I don't remember which one it was, but they were trying to set up to build a um, a ballpark, but they could never get it approved locally because just the people in this town are just ridiculous. They, you know, people complaining about this or that. Scuba and, Steve! Um, so... They ended up going to Durham, North Carolina, and it ended up they ended up being the Durham Rays. What the uh, Bull overrated Durham? Hell no, man. Bull Durham's a fantastic movie. <laughs> okay. Now your camera's all bleached. That's fantastic. Oh, God damn it. Now... <laughs> I gotcha. Logitech. Logic. Is your white balance set to auto? Nope. Oh. I turn I turn off all auto stuff. Everything. That's hilarious. Uh, Beard doesn't get to play with us tonight because he says all of his stuff is packed. Uh, let me go to draw full animate. Let's go here. Let's go there. By the way, I did put up a clip of us playing last week that I thought was pretty funny. It was the circumcised jokes. When you guys see that yeah. stuff, um, if you can, if you would be so kind, if you're watching this stuff, make sure that you're not only liking this stuff, but if you can share it as well on Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is, it helps boost the channel. Uh, so if you're here, make sure you're clicking like down below. But also, um, uh, if you guys can share that stuff, like mainly Facebook, because you can't really share YouTube videos on Instagram. But if you can get it shared on Facebook, it would be great. Right. It'd be great. It'd be great. If you could come in this weekend. Uh, that'd be great. All right, we're doing drawful animate there, boys. Let me go to jackbucks.tv. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and play. All right, boys, your code. Are you ready for the code? Uh -huh. Z D J O. Z J O.
<laughs> ah. Oh, thank you, Anna. I appreciate it. Beard's going to be in Texas for 40 hours for a gig. Yeah, if you're not actually in El Paso, man, you're not anywhere near us over here. It's the one thing that uh, a lot of people don't don't quite understand is just how far El Paso is from every other state or every other city in Texas. <laughs> not in the middle of nowhere. All right, on us in. in Mexico. Give you guys here about uh, 20, 30 more seconds. <clears throat> Go to jackbox.tv. Type in the code ZDJO, ladies and gentlemen. Z D uh, J O. Oh, oh, yeah. It's time for sexy time, ladies and gentlemen. God, that reminds me of that um, Flight of the Concord song, Sexy Time. Sexy Time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm looking at you, looking at me, looking at you, looking at me. Yeah, oh, you're going to be in San Antonio? God, San Antonio is awesome, Beard. I love San Antonio. That San Antonio, a great... uh, there's, a, there's a town just north of San Antonio called New Braunfels. It's between Austin and San Antonio. And uh, a buddy of mine lives there. And it's just, it's uh, if there was a place in Texas that I could move that where I would just be like beyond happy, it would be New Braunfels. New Braunfels is amazing. And you got Austin and San Antonio right there. So you can actually go, you know, check out major concerts. You go, you know, check out a Spurs game. Go to a UT football game. Is nobody else joining? It's just Anna? All right, all right. Well, I guess we'll, uh, we'll get this thing party started. Hi, it's Drawful Animate. When you're here, Get your family, you don't call quickly. me, and no texts. Right. With this many players, Shut we have time for two left, rounds. You know. Ooh, we have Let's time for this. two rounds. By now, you should have a prompt on your device. It might be something unusual, like cold beef or a biological need for speed. Your job is to draw an animation that fits your prompt. You'll get points for each player that guesses your prompt correctly. You're smart. You got it. Don't forget, you can still join the audience by going to jackbox.tv and entering the room code. Started your second frame yet, and it shows. Oh, that sucks, Beard. Yeah, but at least you'll be in that that neck of the woods. We don't have any of the cool stuff here, though. It's like we're going to my, my wife and I are going to Vegas here coming up uh, in April, and uh, we're you know, happens in Vegas planning planning all these things to do. And I'm just like, I just want I want to get some weed and go gamble. <laughs> <laughs> Is that weird? You can still join the audience if you want to, Vero. Oh, this is stupid. Yeah, it's still, it's kind of cut Some off. Some of them are very bad. On Let's the upper left there, it's ZDJO. Thank you for putting it in the chat there, uh, Aunt Anna. 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 Try to trick your friends by writing a really delicious title for this animation on your device. I 
forgot you can change the speed of the animation. Ah, I forgot that. Anna! Okay, which of these do you think originally inspired in, the animation? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, pick something. I can't wait to see what happened. Yeah, you're goddamn right. How is that lunch at work, Lan? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. What the fuck Tap is your this? Fingers on the keyboard to create a title. Junk in the trunk would have been good. Too bad Beard can't play. Write something down. that runs across the screen. Time to dot 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 vote! Exclamation point. All right, let's see how this all shook out. Goddamn right I doubled down, baby. That's a good job there, Lan. to type some titles. Scusi. <coughs> Scusi? I eat a gummy. I eat a gummy. <laughs> <laughs> It's decision time. Bam. Corgi, get the corgi. Okay, here's what happened. Oh, damn. Good job, Lane. You son of a bitch. <laughs> what, did I do something? Yeah, you got me to guess the wrong one. No. <laughs> I got you, though. Somehow I feel like this is my fault. <laughs> what? I honestly thought that was a fake answer from Frank. <laughs> no, it was the real of the lady, answer from Because Frank. of the lady thing. God damn. Dude, when I first got that, I was like, what the f is this shit? Think of a good title and write it down. Whoa. WTF. Believe me when I say it's time to vote. Uh, 
I just gave somebody some bonus points for putting WTF, by the way. Let's see what people <clears throat> picked. Thanks, buddy. Is that you? Did you put WTF? I did. Nice. Because WTF. Because what the fuck? <laughs> That's a hard one, man. Yeah, some of these are just wild in the amount of time. I just realized you it. spelled it trollier. <laughs> trollier dumb. Did I? Yeah. Dude, like the, I know how to spell circumcised now, though. Round two is the, the same. The but time you're length a that I had, it's like sometimes I don't even think I get my votes in now. half the time. The fact that they only give you three colors too. It's better than the original just one that they used to give you, but still. <laughs> I need more diversity in my Jackbox colors. about something very similar in therapy. What is this? That dog's legs are freaking me out, man. Corgi on the bottom of the screen. Oh, yeah, yeah, the woods like centipede legs. <laughs> okay, check these out. Yo, you gotta pick something. Check out the results. Oh, there you go. Everybody got it. And Lan had uh, no escaping jail. It used to be the longest they put it up front. Oh, look yep. at this one. The drama, the intrigue. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 I just like to say that once you see what the title of this was, you'll understand. All I know is my answer is fantastic. And it does not involve circumcision. By the way, if you're tuning in, make sure you're much time clicking left. the thumbs up down below. Faster. Well, this is what we've got. <laughs> That's gotta hurt. <laughs> Just complete shit. I'm not okay, doubling I'm down on that one. This one turned Double out. down on the glory oh. hole. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't. 
because it couldn't have been a top of an aerosol can. Yeah, rotating glory hole. <laughs> Yeah. Jesus. That's why I wanted more color. If it would have been yellow, you would have been like, oh, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I have like a, a, a yellow color on mine. I have green, black, and blue. I have like yellow, orange, and black. Wow. I think wow. we can all agree so like that this just... is an animation. Pound your meat. <laughs> well, this is what the group came up with. I don't have to handle a good movie. Who voted for what? Let's find out. Is that Marilyn Monroe? Oh, damn. Good job, Frank. Hey! I get the hot potato. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gets points. All signs point to yeast? I'm telling you, man. Damn, like, you got dude. hosed, Anna. What the Ouch. fuck was that? Some of these, like these titles I mean, I, they I give you. I see it now that, uh, now that it's there, but uh, like, that's a... What the fuck? And again... I'm gonna buddy your brain. Oh my God. You've reached the final <laughs> animation. <laughs> That's the thing, Anna, is not, now that you see it, like it makes sense, but <laughs> it did look like uh, like too hot to handle or something like that. Oh, those were hands. <laughs> I thought they were. I thought they were bird tails. Here are your choices. A good time, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I like that one. Slow it down. Time's now. almost up. Whoever Make your says, finger touch down. your device in slow a voting down. motion. Go oh, slow it down. Go slow and speed it okay, up. Okay, who picked slow what? Slow it down a little bit and speed it up. Yeah, my fat finger hit um, the zero or the open yeah. instead of I. ball and shaft. See, I'm just got a dirty mind. Mm -hmm. And I doubled down. I doubled down. I doubled down. <laughs> <laughs> I ate a gummy. Yeah! I dominate <laughs> you all! Gummy. Where are we at here? I'm a blue Most fan. like nine. What's up? All right, you crazy kids. We'll get one more uh, in here. Don't forget, coming up this Saturday, probably right around the same time we go on, which would be 9 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, we're going to get in a good three hours of uh, Yak Box. Here on the old YouTube channel. You know what we have not played? Fall guys. Fibbage. Kit! Hello! How are you, Kit? Let's see here. No, we haven't done uh, we haven't done any fibbage. So I want to play some fibbage here. Remember that really crappy uh rap one that we played with Shim? Yeah. Where it had like the robots actually, rapping. I actually enjoyed that one because my my robot won. <laughs> <laughs> he hated it. I remember that. He hated that one. Dooby like dooby doo. Is that your friend, Anna? Is Kit your friend? All right, we're doing fibbage here, boys. I got a fibbage. You like it a fibbage, eh? Yes, I like it a fibbage. Uh, you like it a fibbage? Yes, the fibbage. You like it a fibbage, eh? 
probably one of my favorite Saturday Night Live skits of them just doing it. You like it? You like it? Juice, juice, oh, yeah, you like it? Juice. I just need more napkins. All right, your code. Oh, you need more napkins for the juice. Everybody. Oh, you don't know who she is. All right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. Cool. You guys can become friends now. Welcome to the chat. Hey, I made a friend. Uh, JPMQ. JPMQ. M is in Nancy. <laughs> yeah, that. Kit, you're more than welcome to join on the game here if you uh, if you want. Just go to Jackbox.tv. And then you put that code in there, and we have uh, five spots available. Play some Fibbage. There's Kit. We're waiting for, uh, there's Vero. Beard can't play. Haven't seen Scuba Steve. Nightmare's there. We got uh, seven. We got one more spot. I'll give you guys about 20 seconds here. Let's do uh, a little bit of this. Scuba Steve likes to spectate. He's like a spectator man. Let's go ahead and start this biatch. I need a gummy. You need gummy. Welcome to Fibbage 4, the game that all the Instagram How did you find the channel, uh, Kit, if you don't mind me asking? difficult to play for a dog. Probably because nice he's you. a car Let's hope this game goes super... more smoothly no, than my Kit recent attempt keys. to drive down local uh. real estate prices by dressing up as a ghost. Maybe this is Kit from oh, League of Their Own. Oh, and anyone else Ooh. can join the audience. Audience members She's are in dead. points of their own by spotting the truth and tricking the players. Let's hit it. I hate to break it to you. She's good. This is this one where we try to lie, right? One, which means you get 500 points for everyone you fool with your made-up answer. Just said she wants and a you'll get a thousand <laughs> for finding the Are truth. <laughs> All right. Oop, choose Lane gets to choose category. the category. Tuscaloosa? There you go. All right, question oh, one. It's going to be about the guy Let's from... Let's hear it for John Peterson. From 1999 until 2014, it was his job and his job alone to Jesus. clean and polish... <laughs> of course, it would start off with this. So, now, hey, hey, Brandon, what's your answer? Yeah. Yeah. It's believable enough to fool the other players. If you just can't come up with anything, use the lie for me button to get a suggestion for half the points. Start already. I like too that it, it can make you a lie if you can't think of one. Like, yeah. Yeah, we'll um, well, Kit, we gotta uh, we're gonna be playing a lot more Jackbox. We, this, so we kind of mix this in with some other topics that we do on Wednesday nights during the live stream. But coming up this Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time, we're gonna do a big full on Jackbox night where we'll play for a few hours. So your come your on choices. over. Make sure you're also that clicking that you like button below. On your device. Oh God damn it. It edited my response. There's there's three knobs. <laughs> Let's take a look. Oh, see, Vero has a much cleaner mind than mine because mine wasn't edited. Mine's still on there. Mm. Two ladies know how to lie. Mm. There you go. Hey. Everybody getting points. I put the statue of David's penis. <laughs> I put doorknobs. I put hotel doorknobs. <laughs> I gave everybody who put knob in their response plus five. <laughs> yeah. Give yeah. me a category. <laughs> it's like, there's three knobs. Oh, Nightmare gets to pick. Plot. 
Hopefully, Exclusive. hopefully uh, she's able to see that on her screen before. Okay, listen up. Yep. Evan Genoese, an engineering student at Northern Arizona University, rigged a mechanism to his dorm oh door God. so that anyone who entered would trigger blank. Write your lies now. So where are you from, Kit? I'm in uh, El Paso, Texas. Big land right there. He's in Portland, which is actually where I grew up. And then uh, Sharple's over there, who we call Frank. He's over in Tallahassee, Florida. Tallahassee, Florida. Florida. Thank you, Jackson. You just say that. <laughs> We're Nilly. And you can just give a region if you don't want to be too specific, by the way. Or you, can, you don't even have to answer. Uh, that's, that's fine. Uh, that's fine as well. I am from the state of existence. All right, pick the truth. Fart spray. A woman's moan. A Desert Eagle point five zero. I like I like the hello by Adele and hello hello. Th those both get a thumbs up for me. Yeah, I got two people. Nice. <laughs> Huzzah! Winner. These are all the ones I gave plus five to. Oh. Which one did I pick? I wish it would have been fart spray. Ooh. Everybody getting points. My, nobody's violent for Nobody, my guys. Lies. It was a Seinfeld theme. I like that guy. I haven't gotten a single person to believe my bullshit. Because <laughs> you haven't said anything about dicks or balls yet. I did. I put, I put David's penis. Under my bed. Yeah, but it, it edited it for you. Remember? No, 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 no. Because um, was that Vera? Were you the one that had that? She just put Statue of David. I put oh. Statue of David's penis. Okay, Which, by the way, Kit, I'm hoping that you're... Uh, not like a 10 year old Over kid. The age of 18. <laughs> I'm die laughing at that guy. He said it. He killed me. Say, who is this Gilbert anyway? Yeah, I'm surprised you haven't put Tuggy Putt on he something. He's not so much a name as yeah, that would have been my mind. next. That's, That's right. going to be the name of this routine, movie. Safety precautions. Don't mean a thing to Delbert. This Navy training video stars a very careless pilot named Dilbert, who must learn an important lesson that's helpful in and out of the military. Don't blank. Okay, enter those lies. Beard says, polish your knob on the plane. In the plane. There you go. Tuck the pun. There it is. See, that's not me. Okay, what everybody pick? I don't see mine. Oh, there it is. Yeah, hell yeah. Well, well. Dilbert is now making up his own rules. Dilbert is now making up his own rules. Don't kill your friends. <laughs> Land got it.
on to round two, where all point values are doubled. Give me a category. Give this one a shot. If you're ever in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, consider making a pilgrimage to one of America's hidden gems, the Blank Hall of Fame Museum. All right, type in your lies. Frank, you're muted, by the way, buddy. I just saw him I moving hit. his mouth, and I was like, oh, he's like, I wonder if he's I hit to talk C, right and that's my hot Shut button to mute. Boy, you go. Oh, God. Tuscaloosa, holy crap. Try there's not a Nick Saban question. Time to seek the truth. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> incest, cousin fucking, kin There's cousins. A bunch, of, <laughs> bunch of cousins and stuff. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> so it's got to be croquet or insurance, right? Okay, how do we do? Oh, I got us. Nice job, Nightmare. Oh, that was a big one. So this is definitely the incest hall of fame. You're pretending I'm <laughs> having a bad time. Insurance. Well, because it's Alabama, probably. Alan. We never actually why. read the fine print oh on my insurance God. policies. We got a bunch what of a drunk rednecks of, that drive around land. and shoot things. They need as much Can't believe as nobody can. guessed cousin fucking. <laughs> None of those, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's take a moment to remember the dead. Very interesting. Dead. Interesting. Yeah, just uh, a little warning there, Kit. We uh, t things tend to get a little dark and uh, adult here on the stream. So, so just a heads to up. Prove his blank. Answer your lies now. Demosthenes? Demosthenes? Demosthenes, right? Demosthenes? Now, which one's the truth? Good lord. Let's see how it shook out. Yeah! <laughs> I ate a gummy. <laughs> You're a gummy. What? Nightmare's a good liar. You are a nightmare. What the hell? <laughs> oh, good job, Land. Ah, uh, see, I see, I balance. I, I was. It almost sounded too. Nobody picked wow. this. I thought it was public speaking. He yeah, but you didn't I thought it was. Yeah, yeah. Have to stay I thought it was the right answer after I guessed the wrong one. No, because it's the yeah. Yeah. okay, LeBron James, <laughs> the weirdest one there. It's always the the like the craziest one. It's like, why would public speaking have anything to do with shaving your head? Because it's the fucking answer. I don't know. Stamina in bed. What's our next right up there. Vero's picking. Oh, Kit says, no, don't worry. It's just sometimes I switch from family-friendly Jackbox to these Jackboxes. 
the, the Olympics. Olympics. Well, let's see what you think of this. Ouch. A German pentathlon coach was thrown oh, out Lord. of the 2021 Tokyo Olympics for allegedly punching blank. Submit your lies now. I think I remember what that was about, too. Aren't the Olympics this summer as well? Next summer, I think, isn't it? Uh, was it? I thought it was because they were doing it this year because no, it was I think it supposed is this to be year. 2020, I think it is. but it was... So they're trying to stay on that every four years schedule instead of... Hmm. I thought because the Euros were this summer that they wouldn't have the Olympics. Yeah, I it's uh, July through August of this year. Come on now, let's get truthy. Mario time! Adrian Brody? <laughs> it's -a me, I'm on. It's -a me, Mario time! Hmm, let's see what you picked. Just punch his two year old kid. Good, good luck, <laughs> kid. That was good. Got you, suckers. Nay, I mean nine. Yeah, I think I remember that one, but I, I, I didn't really pay attention to the Olympics that year. I love butternuts. Welcome to the final these, fibbage. Um, it's a two word question, the... and it's worth triple the, the jackalope. Jackalope, that's right. Cause... That guy on America's Funniest People. An would Australian always do man the, named Bill Edgar has made a living out of professionally blank. And Dr. Scott Green came under investigation for performing surgery and blank at the same time. Now you're gonna write one lie that sounds like it might fit in either of these two blanks. That's double the chance to fool your fellow players. Oh, it has Make to fit it good, both of them, and it right? might get picked for both blanks. I was already thinking of what bonus. we were going to do for that one. Got all that? I'll give you a little extra. <laughs> oh, we are. We're doing one, that one. So don't freak out. How do I fit masturbating in here? <laughs> I think you just do <laughs> tugging pug like you always say. Flogging the dolphin. That timer's at the halfway mark, by the way. Beard says, uh, polishing knobs. <laughs> ah, we miss you in the games, Beard. Hopefully you'll be back. Uh, are you going to be back next Wednesday or are you going to be on the road? Is that when you're going to be in Texas? Okay, these are the choices. These questions have two different truths, but we'll focus on this one first. Tugging pud. Choose the truth for just this question now. Touching kangaroos. That is Australian, I will say that. Let's move on to this question. Guess the truth for just this question now. Speaking of, does anybody know what happened to Andrew? Uh, whatever Kendrick that chick is, whatever happened to that name? Anna Kendrick? Kendrick, yeah, whatever happened to her. I don't know, I thought she was still acting. I 
heard she's tugging Come on, bud. Show me what you picked. Good job, Land. Double so deception. Believable, it's worth a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> Good light nightmare. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great Damn, if a kid, doctor was training this. him to fight? Oh, I only got Ana. If it's texting, I'll throw my computer to Oh, bird. Vero, good, uh, good job. A multi-fool. Definitely tugging pug, isn't it? How the f what? How can you perform surgery and crash a Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. So I know. So it's. So the truths uh. are different. No, yeah. He was defending himself Even in court Dr. at Green the same used time. Zoom to protest a traffic ticket while he was in surgery. Everything went fine, so Bill's services up. were not needed. <laughs> this guy sounds amazing. It is Dr. Nick. Everybody. Oh, oh, Nightmare came oh. back! <laughs> Nightmare knows how to lie. Good job. 14 likes there on Nightmare's Lies. Peace. Oh, that that was look at that. Look at the top three right there. We were all so close. We were all we were so close, close everybody. Time but on that note, everybody. Well played, everybody. Well played, Kit. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for hanging out with us. We uh, do this every Wednesday. We start at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, because that's the time zone I'm in, or 9 p.m. Eastern, or 6 p.m. Pacific, whichever uh, you choose. If you go back and rewatch the beginning of the stream, you'll notice it's not Jackbox the whole time. We do cover different topics, and we kind of have some fun doing some things like that. And then we play some Jackbox. There's some other games that we're going to get into. Don't forget. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, Don't forget to swallow. Go coming up uh, <laughs> coming up this Saturday uh, around 7 p.m. Mountain Time, we're going to be doing a full Jackbox stream. We'll get you know good two to three hours of uh, Jackbox time in. So we're going to have some fun with that. So make sure you guys are tuning in for that. Don't forget two shorts drop every day here on my YouTube channel. One in the morning. <laughs> Normally one mine and yours. Not my shorts or reels, if you will. Uh, <laughs> lots of content here. So make sure you're subscribing. You're clicking the bell to get the notifications. You're also liking all of the stuff that definitely helps out. You can also follow me over on other social medias. It's at The Real Brandalorian, Instagram and Facebook as well. One thing, if you guys can, please, I'm taking a lot of the, uh, the content that we're doing and I'm isolating those as clips. And then I'm posting that stuff separately on my YouTube channel. If you can, mainly on Facebook, because that's the easiest social media to do it on. If you want to do it on Twitter, you can do that as well. Instagram is kind of out. TikTok is out. Those two you can't really do it with. But uh, share that content. Make sure you get it out there. Bring your friends along. Join them and uh, get them to come join the conversation as well. Um, we do have an interesting topic coming up for next week. And I'm not sure how much I can tell you. Because Frank is being very secretive about it. I mean, I mean, you can say the topic. We're just not going to give him the options until that. Uh, oh, so that day. so that's the point. So the whole thing, the 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 topic is, is it you have to replace your family, or would you want to replace your family? It would it, it would be the the option of if you had to replace your family, and then I'll give you the options of who would they be. Oh, so you're providing the options. I, I have all the answers for you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we have that coming up next Wednesday. And uh, don't forget, there's also the videos that I do here on YouTube that are essentially kind of like explaining something or giving a history of something in two minutes. Did one on Mike Tyson. I also had one that I did on Michael Keaton last weekend. Another one will be coming up on Saturday as well. So on that note, everybody it's wish... Pud. It's all about Tug and Pud. Everybody wish Big Lan a happy, happy birthday. 
He's uh, turning 25 coming up uh, on, it's Friday, right? Yeah. Coming up on Friday, which is why he's uh, off this weekend, which is why we're going to do the live stream on Saturday. So have yourselves a fantastic rest of your week. Hopefully we'll see you guys in just a few days. Bye, Mr. Spaku! Mr. Spaku! So you